This seance was recorded on the 12th of July, 1968, medium as the flint. How are you? I'm all right, thanks, <coughs> Mickey. Well, Very well. it's about time you came. I haven't seen you for ages. No, I know. <coughs> Things went wrong somewhere. Well, you should make sure of your affairs. Well, you <laughs> see, the thing is this, that one minute Leslie's going, packing up and going off to Brighton, and he's not making any more bookings, and then by the time I find all that's falling through, it's too late, you see. Well, you should get your affairs straightened out. Yes, love. Anyway, you'll be seeing me all being well about once a fortnight now. Oh, well, that's all right, then, because I miss you. Do you know? Oh, that's nice. I miss yeah, you, too. Yeah, how are things at home? All right. Well, things are all right at home. Yes, very well. You're going to well. get rid of that piano? Why? I don't know, I just wondered if you should get rid on it. Well, you never use it, you never play it. No, I know I don't, but I think I shall hang on to it for as long as, well, for Jessie's sake, really, in a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I suppose if I moved to another flat somewhere or did something, I might have to get rid of it because it would be in the way. I don't know how you manage it. How <laughs> <laughs> you manage what? So much stuff in one place. <laughs> yes, but I have uh, reorganised things a lot. I've replaced things with other things, you understand me? How did you move that piano? <laughs> How did, well, two men brought it up from, uh, you know, Pickford's, the removal people, they did it for me. Gosh. But um, I'll admit it probably would be a problem later on, sometime. But I feel at home with a piano. Do you? Mm. It's sort of company, you know. Hello. Hello. Very well, thank you. You are very well. Yes. Good. That is as it should be. How are you? Well, I am extraordinarily well. It's very well indeed. It would be very odd if I were not very well, don't you think? Yes, I'm sure it would be. What would be the point of passing from your word to this if you were not better off? It would be better to know nothing, to be finished, than to come into a word which was not a happy one. I know that. No, I'm very happy. I'm very, very thrilled and happy with everything. I come and see you quite often. I don't think you always realize it. I think sometimes you doubt yourself, doubt everything. Well, I think there's a danger in that, Rudy, because I think with this subject you can relate so many things to it and you probably put more into it than is already there. You understand what I mean? I would have thought you'd had so much uh, proof. Oh, I'm not worried about the proof, Rudy. No, I don't mean that. But very often I, I feel that there's someone sensing there's someone there. And I'm <coughs> practically in the habit of wanting to make a conversation. And then I think, well, perhaps it's my own imagination. It seems a bit... Well, in any case, it is not necessary to make a conversation uh, in an audible sense. It no, is I a know mental that. process. Mm. Uh, there are occasions when you are conscious of one's presence, and not only my presence, but your mama's presence, and uh, sometimes other people's presence. We are often there because we feel that, um, not only because we wish to come, but uh, because sometimes I think you perhaps feel lonely, and, uh, well, we like to cheer you up. Yes, I know, dear, you do. But you've been much. very busy one way and another, you know, at different times you have been finding plenty of things to occupy your mind. Yes, I always do. Which is a very good thing. Always uh, to keep yourself occupied doing something or other uh, is very good. And occasionally you go out. Yes, I think that my trouble is <coughs> finding the time to do all these things is most important. But you find time. I do, yes. But you should not sit up in the early hours of the morning doing things. You should go to bed and get a good night's sleep. Oh dear. <laughs> you have a habit of, uh, once you start something, of carrying on to two in the morning or something. Yes, I That's do. not good. You don't get your proper sleep and then you don't feel too good the next day. It's not good for you. You should only have late nights or early mornings when you know you haven't got to get up in the morning. 
All right, I'll try. No good for you. When you have to get to office and have worry and responsibility, you should concern yourself with getting a good night's sleep. You don't sleep as well as you should sometimes, or as long as you should. No, I know that. Always there is something that you seem to find to do. Well, I think jobs seem to crowd upon me. I don't uh, particularly seek them, but I suddenly discover that there's something I have to do, and there you are. You are not going to have no holiday? No. Why? Cannot afford it? No, can't afford it. But you're going to have a change? That's right. Good. Perhaps Leslie will go away. Then you come to this house? That's right. Oh, that should be fun. Mm, I like it. You have the docks. Mm. And the garden and the park. That interest. You know that I find plenty to do, huh? Oh, I shall find plenty to do. By the way, talking about plenty to do, um, on earth, all our time is spent in attending to <coughs> the needs of the physical body. Um, what is your daily routine on your side where there is no necessity for that? Well, since we don't have days and nights, as you understand it, we don't have any daily routine. We don't have to get up in the morning to wash and to chef or things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not necessary. One stays in a strange kind of way, you know, all right, you know. Yeah. One doesn't need to have to do anything in particular. No, I wondered about that, but uh, doesn't one feel slightly, one, not bored, but it's rather, um, well, irregular, really, anyone who's just passed over, don't they get... No, because there are always so many interesting things to do, and the places to visit, and things to discuss, and things to learn. Uh, many interesting things, and people always find something of interest to do. Perhaps it may be that somebody, when on earth, did not have the opportunity to study in a certain direction. Here they can study, and they can learn, and they can experiment, and uh, it depends, of course, what it is they are most interested in. But everyone here finds work, as you would say, that is of congenial nature to them. In other words, they can do the sort of things which possibly on earth was not possible, things which were out of the question for them. Here they can take up an interest or they can take up a vocation, uh, some work, you know, the vocation that is of interest for them. <laughs> if someone on earth, for instance, would have liked to be a great musician, here they can study the instrument, they can learn, they can practice, they can go to concerts, they can converse with great musicians. Uh, they can be shown methods and ways and to express themselves, and they can learn, you see. Uh, that is only just one thing of thousands of different interests and things that one can do. Maybe a man has very much for himself the liking of a garden. Here, then, he can study uh, flowers, uh, he can learn more about uh, the garden itself and about plants, life, and uh, he can have a beautiful garden to start, as you say, from the beginning to develop it and keep it in good condition and make it beautiful. Uh, and then there are great parks, great places where there are what you would call, I suppose, professional artists who can create and do create magnificent displays. And then there are great vast areas of beautiful uh, scenery, uh, beautiful lakes, uh, mountains, uh, uh, there are everything that you would associate in the way of nature and the way of beauty in, in, in life here, much more so than on earth. Everything that is uh, beautiful and of value, things that give great joy and pleasure to people on earth exist here, but more so. Uh, there are many people, of course, who have an inventive mind, and they can and they do invent and create a new things which are a benefit to other people. You see, I think it is important to realize that there are so many different strata's of consciousness and being, and of course on each plan or condition of life, according to the individuals, there are opportunities. And when one is exhausted, everything that one can experience on a certain level of consciousness or plan of life, 
then one enters almost, you might say, automatically by the very nature of things, ex designing to express and to find out for oneself and to learn, one opens up a new door, as it were, to a new form of life and consciousness. Everything is a gradual s progression. It is so slow, it is true, in the sense that uh, one is hardly aware of the changes taking place. But these are pl changes that take place within oneself, and as well they take change within oneself, so audibly and uh, visibly these things, new things become conscious to you, things that you did not know exist, the same as with you in your world, there are many things that you are not conscious of, and yet all around and about you are varying forms and degrees of life, many things that you do not expect are there, waiting, it is like as if there are unknown sources to be tapped, new consciousness to be uh, aware of. Life in your world is constantly changing, but it is so subtle in this change that sometimes you hardly discern it within yourself. I don't mean just only the ordinary routine things of life, but I'm talking here more about the consciousness of things, the awareness of things. This is more acute on this side. That is why there are no restrictions. I mean, these restrictions that sometimes people think must be are really, in a sense, within oneself. One restricts oneself, but if you are uh, conscious, uh, desiring to be conscious of, and aware of new things. In other words, if you are developing yourself in the right sense, you are opening up your consciousness to an awareness to things which already exist. Some people seem to think that uh, things that they are not aware of cannot be. In fact, they don't even realize. Then they're, they're not even conscious of these things. They don't even know of their existence. But the point is that as one progresses, so one opens up one's mind and one's whole being to know where new things, these things are there. That's the same with time, which is an illusion. The past and the present and the future are in a sense the whole one. Just because you cannot see uh, the world, perhaps in ten years' time, doesn't mean to say it isn't already in existence. In a kind of strange kind of way, the past and the present have prepared the future. The future is already beginning to become slightly discernible, or shall we say the possibility of it, but it is already formed to a great extent. And this applies, of course, just to your world. If this is so, and it is so, how much more so it must be here. That is why eternity, to some people, seems perhaps something they cannot comprehend. But it is because people don't understand or do not realize that eternity is is a reality in as much that there is so much that is waiting to be discovered, so much waiting to be experienced. There is nothing that is still or stationary. And there is no such thing as a still or stationary existence. Man has great ignorance on these things. And when one realizes that one goes from face to face, from sphere to sphere, condition of life to condition of life, in other words, when one realizes that life is eternal progression, but the progress perhaps is so subtle and so slow that it is not always possible to be fully conscious or aware of it in the fully sense. There's so much happening all the time, and gradually one begins to see and discern it and understand it and become part of it. This is progression, and this is what makes eternity a reality, because there is nothing that is dead, there is nothing that is stationary. Consciousness exists in many layers, as it were, of awareness and condition of thought. When things he is very progressed on a certain scientists in particular, or people of high mental, so-called material ability, consider themselves very highly evolved. But they are like infants, in a sense, in time itself and experience. There is so much undiscovered. There are many miracles, so it seems, that you today accept as natural laws, natural things. But the whole point is there is nothing unnatural in life, whatever it may be or whatever form it may take. Everything is there already to be, as it were, become conscious or aware of. Out in outer space, as you term it, are millions upon millions of different forms of existence on different levels of consciousness according to the individuals who inhabit those conditions. This is something which man has not yet grasped. But once man realizes that the physical life, the physical body, is but a, a small, minute part of life itself, it is, is what may seem at the time important and vital and in, 
essential, which of course it is, but nevertheless, if one can realize that in the evolution of man and the development of time, or the expression of man in so-called time, this is in a sense only a minute part. It is in a kind of way an odd illusion. Actually, one day you will see much more clearly, even perhaps while yet on earth, many of the things that are being prepared there will become a more conscious awareness. I think science eventually on earth will create, or scientists will create, some method of communication uh, which will make, to some extent, our consciousness and, uh, visible in a, in a sense that you will be able not only to hear, and see, but be able to see that it is feasible and possible that there will be some organization or group of individuals who will create scientifically some mechanism or apparatus which will make it possible to tune in to different layers of consciousness of man on different spheres or conditions of life. And whether it will be perfect, I suppose not, but nevertheless sufficiently uh, um, real, sufficiently conscious in itself that man on earth will be convinced of life after so-called death. This will come, and I feel sure it must come, in such a scientific way, in a material sense too, for conviction, that it may, we hope, eventually change the thinking of man to such an extent that your world will in consequence become a very changed world. This, it seems to us, is the only hope for your world, that when science, in conjunction with scientists and people on this side who are striving to help, create and make possible a form of communication uh, which will be perhaps like some sort of radar screen, as you call it, where you'll be able to see or tune in two aspects of our lives here on different levels of consciousness and expression, to be able to see and hear. This could be the door which will open up for man a new way of thinking, a new way of life. It could outlaw many of the things which cause so much concern in your work. This is what we aim for, although of course we are grateful for mediums. Mediums in themselves serve a very important purpose. They are our only link at the moment with us, but there will come a time, we hope and pray, when it will not be uh, necessary to depend on mediums as such, but science will have improved or made possible a method in a way whereby we can reach you in a scientific sense acceptable to all mankind, which then will make man realize his responsibility to one to the other, to nation to nation. And man will see the futility of war, see the futility of all the stupid things that come into being through man's ignorance and foolishness. When man gains wisdom, occult wisdom, spiritual wisdom, wisdom of the things that are living and real and eternal, the, these things which are part of our lives and which should be part of yours. There are a few people who are conscious of these things, of course, but there are very few. We think that in certain countries in your world, Russia possibly in particular, where they are experimenting on certain lines, which will bring, we feel, some consciousness and awareness of our worlds to us, and man will begin to realize how stupid it is to consider himself chiefly with material things. We know that there are experiments going on, that attempts are being made into outer space with various um, methods, uh, particularly in regard to astronauts and so on. Uh, this serves a very important and useful purpose, and success of a kind will come. But there are other methods and other ways which will be opened up of communication which are all based, in a sense, really, on the mental process. Mind is the only thing that really, in a sense, matters, because it is by mind, it is by the transmission of thought, the realization of the power of thought, the uh, being able to spread oneself a further afield and not limit oneself to material thoughts and ideas and body in particular, and world in particular. But when one can tune in mentally and spiritually, when one can grasp the immensity of the power of thought, when one realizes that time is non-existence, when you can get beyond time and space, as man will eventually, into the outer world, to the different layers of consciousness of souls long since having left the earth, but who still live in a real world, world which is to them as solid and as real as yours is, you will find there will be methods and ways when man will learn and open up his consciousness in such a sense that there will be, as it were, emerging of, of, of ideas, emerging of different thoughts and different worlds. So there will not be the separating thing, uh, separating things which seem to concern man so much at the moment. 
Most people are afraid of death. Most people think death is the end. It isn't. It's the beginning. When man can realize the consciousness of man continues and can never stop living, activating, and creating, and in consequence being possible for man while yet on earth to communicate mentally and spiritually, when man understands his tremendous power within, and when man begins scientifically to build, as he will, certain mechanisms and machines uh, that will open up new vistas and horizons, make possible man to communicate with souls long since departed in a scientific way, when man realizes there are untold millions of worlds all around in the outer world, away from the earth. In other words, in the atmosphere, there are millions upon millions of souls vibrating in harmony with our own particular environment and condition of life. And these are real worlds, real consciousness will come to man as regards these things. Then there will be true progress. Then the world of earth will change in consequence. That is what many people on this side are trying to do. Help those on your side who have the ability to some extent to be creative in a material way and yet in a sense fundamentally a spiritual awareness and consciousness will come to them through the things that they will discover. We believe in science when it is being used for the benefit of man. Unfortunately, much scientific thought is given to things which are of no benefit to man, indeed are very bad for man, indeed are evil things. But there are those few scientists in different places who are thinking deeply on the lines of the possibility of communication with other worlds, other planets, other lives, other forms of life. These things will come into operation eventually. You will see gradually how progress will be made in communication on different levels of consciousness. These things must be, these things will come. This is what we're all striving for, but we have to be content in the meantime by using instruments as best we can, but the rest will fall off, you see. Uh, isn't there a danger that the scientists would reserve all this for themselves and not make... Oh, no, 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 I don't no. think so. Because to some of the things that we hope and we feel will happen in regard to scientific evolution and development in the sphere of which I speak are such that they could not possibly keep it to themselves. In fact, it would become so um, important in their individual lives uh, that um, it would be something that would be so good for man and it would make possible communication between our worlds on such a high level that we could advise and help and we can do so much that is good. I don't think that it will be used or could be used uh, for bad purposes, neither could those concerned keep it to themselves. No, no, this is something quite different to the orthodox, ordinary idea of scientific um, development and evolution. This is something which is, in a sense, one might say is spiritual, although there again our interpretation of spiritual is not necessarily yours. When man on earth thinks of spiritual things, he thinks in a religious sense. This has got nothing to do with religion. This has got to do with life, which is eternal life, which is beyond religion itself, which is merely man's idea of things. This is something which is part of life, and indeed is life fundamentally, and which is, well, it is impossible to, to erase it. This is eternal life, which is uh, for all human life, all peoples of all nations of all times. Indeed, it is as if the distant past of perhaps 2,000 or 4,000 or 8,000 or whatever it is years ago are still living and breathing on different vibrations and experience on different levels of consciousness. Nothing is lost. All that has happened is still there. All that is to be is waiting to be discovered. This is something that man can't understand yet. His, in, his mind cannot grasp it. But this is what we are talking about when we talk about eternal life, when we talk about different worlds or consciousness or spiritual worlds. These are all part of a complete expression of God. But we don't define God as a person. God is a power, is a divine force that is within all of us, which makes all things possible. We, we have no limiting ideas as man has. Once man rids himself of these limiting thoughts and ideas of a personal God or a Savior, once he realizes that um, he has within himself the power of the Spirit which is indestructible, that life is ever continuous and ever expressing itself in different forms, different ways, that there is no such thing as death. Death is the door that opens up oneself to a greater realization of the things. 
These are the truths which we want to get over, but it's not easy, and we have to content ourselves with what instruments we can find for the time being. But science one day will come, I'm sure, to a point where it will be able to make a scientific approach and a scientific realization of these truths in such a way that the whole of mankind will become aware, and there will be a day, perhaps not so far distant, when it will be possible by some mechanism which in appearance might even be like a television screen that you can switch on and tune in and not only hear but see the manifestation of life going on all around you. This is what we hope for, but it will take a long time, no doubt, but perhaps not so far away as one may think. You know, I look forward for this, because one day we must get down to this book. That is why I talk this way today. Huh? Yes, I know. I'm happy anyway, so I must too. go. But um, I speak to you again in two or three weeks' time. Huh? Yes, that's right. Anyway, I must go. All my love and bless you. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye, Rudy. And Thank don't you worry. So no, I won't. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Mickey, dear. It's interesting today, isn't it? Yes.